Tuesday night, that's right, I'm here with Nick and Steve and George and uh, surrounded by 11,000 VHS tapes. We're trying to watch all of them. We're at about 43% right now. And what we'll do is we'll watch them and we'll laugh and sometimes sometimes we'll have serious discussions about them too, right, Nick? Often, often, yeah, yeah very serious. And then occasionally we watch them with you on Tuesday nights. That's how the show exactly. works. Exactly, yep. I and see you gussied up your uh, background there a little bit. Yeah, I bit. did. I finally got, I brought a screwdriver in so that I could screw things into ah, okay. the back. Yeah, there's the uh, I love you mirror that you got me. When, do you remember yep. that one? I do, uh, yep. And you handed it to me and you said, I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. That was a serious moment. There's uh, the, uh, <laughs> that was serious moments. Here's the uh, one from the Taco Bell game right here. Yep. Remember that? You gave me that and you also said, I love you. Mm -hmm. Here's my tooth heart. I got uh, Erase and Caitlin up there. Can you see, uh, what's his name? Tapey? Yeah. Tape boy. Tape, tape boy. Yeah, there yeah. he is. Yeah. Hey, I got to call that guy back and find out about more of those tape boys because we still have all those raffles to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. making dolls out of VHS tapes. And then, of course, the deflated balloons. And the one on um, your left was holding strong, holding steady for a long time. But now it's it's, it's also very dusty, too. OK. Yeah. Yeah, it's now a, it's really dust. Yeah. Okay. Did you well, get anything cool this week in the mail, Nick? Yeah, I got a couple of uh, seasonal videos, which I tend to gravitate towards. I, I was in the office, looked at, uh, first of all, March coming in like a lamb. We got Sherry Lewis, Lamb Chop in the Land of No Manners. Okay. Um, you, love, you love manners videos. That's like one of your genres, right? Yeah. Your I put, genres like clowns, manners, um, yeah. elf, and I think I, that's it. Yep, that's it. That's all I do here. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I do. I do have a, a series of manners videos, and I I have a manners montage, but I want to add to it. And the other one, I'm I'm uh, getting ahead for March. I was looking in uh, our seasonal videos. I got Patty McGinty's Irish humor, which I'm sure will be respectful. I'm sure it'll be uh, not stereotypical, and I'm sure it'll I'm all fake be laughing already. <laughs> yep, look forward to that for our St. Pat. Uh, this one, Pat's Kate Scott sent Scott sent this one. It's a French. I forgot what it's actually called, but this one's called Motards uh, La Space. Oh, Motards Biker Meyer, Biker Mice from Mars. Yeah, and this is one of the Motards right there. And uh, it has a Motard Pog that's included in there, too. So <laughs> we should watch this for Saturday. Just timeless, yeah, and have a French-speaking person on. Um, and then uh, Aaron and Christina sent this nice gift. She got they got gifts for both of you guys too. This is an orange cat that's a warrior. Orange cats, of course, show best cats. Uh, Rich, uh, Rich, uh, Bob? Bob sent this uh, Dr. Scholl's magazine called the Five Day Bowel Detox, and it should be called Filth Digest. Really, really. And it's got I was pictures just in there. Yeah, I was paging through, and uh, you Don't might know. recognize a certain mm -hmm. lover. Is that Lover? That's Lover, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, really? remember, remember Lover? I remember that from the video. Yeah, you need to go back and watch that uh, if you didn't see that episode. But um, please, actually, please. on Patreon that, on patreon.com slash found footage festival, we watched that video where he this guy talks, Dr. Schultz talks about his bowel cleansing techniques. In great detail, too. Yeah. What do you think about that, that photo there? <laughs> oh, I That's love a Getty it. image? <laughs> no, I think Dr. Schultz took that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, some... Wow, lots of nice. So things. yeah, oh, can I? Oh, you know what? Uh, Judah sent us a very thoughtful present. I and I didn't open it all the way up because I wanted to save it for the show. But we'll do an unboxing here to start off the show. Um, now, Judah is an actual doctor who watches yep. the show and gives us medical advice when we need it. Yep, and he sent this very nice thing for us. And I'll open up this part first. It's a framed um, Uncle Moishi 
2020 toe tapping tournament final four framed. So this is like Uncle Moishi's, like look at it. It's like an actual poster of uh, wow. yeah of Uncle Moishi. That is yeah. no joke. We yeah. played a lot of Uncle Moishi, so he had that professionally framed. It looks like looks yeah. that's uh, amazing. And Nick, you know, we have that couch in here too, and we don't have any pillows for it. Mm -hmm. He made some, well, he ordered some pillows. There's some like stuffing here, and you stuff it inside of this, which is in the <gasps> space business. What isn't a little crazy sometimes? Wow, from Computer Beach Party. Yes, the best line in the entire movie. Wow. So that'll go on one side of the couch. The other side will have Dirt Cheap, the last refuge of the persecuted smoker. You remember Dirt Cheap? <laughs> yes. Cheap, cheap. Yeah, yeah. It was so, a local commercial, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know where it was Holy from. But, uh, but yeah, you zip it up like this and you put it in the stuffing. We'll put it on the couch and then uh, we'll snuggle up. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Wow. Judah, so thank nice you things. so much. Yeah. yeah, that's a little sneak peek at nice things. But we always like to start off with a classic from our collection, something a little older that we, we blow the dust off and remind you of uh, why we do what we do. What do we, uh, let's, let's start that. You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or water beds for less. Uh, okay, so this week uh, we got uh, Candy Pants, Volume 7. Yep. Remember this guy? Absolutely. Public access show that Eileen from Memphis, she sent us that. She sent us a bunch of great public access. Thomas O'Dady, she sent us. She sent us Red Lightning. Um, yeah, this comes from Volume 7. This guy's a minister. His name's Lionel Davis, and he sings a song called Candy Pants. And uh, I'll let him just speak for himself here in this Found Footage Festival classic. <laughs> Yeah, he'd forget all about her zipper. And he'd be like, how do these things come down? Like, right. if, if he doesn't remember how zippers work. He said he'd eat the seat right off of her pants. So maybe that's the idea. Oh, that's how he gets it. Okay, he gets the zipper. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Heard of your good and do slam dunks in your swimming trunks. Oh, sugar britches, you got my nerves and stitches. Candy pants, you make my heart do a break dance. Do a break dance. Yeah, so uh, there you go. Boy. That's uh, that's just a little bit. I couldn't find the full version. I want to find the full version mm. someday so we can watch all of it. Yeah, it's uh, one of our DVDs. I think it's somewhere out there. Yeah. But yeah, so Candy Pants is a great way to kick off the show. Uh, I haven't watched and, that for a long time. And like beautiful women usually, like beautiful like beachside women usually wear swimming trunks, right? When right. they're like out at the beach, they will put on their swimming trunks. Yeah, so you can do slam dunks yeah. in them. <laughs> so I think a lot trunks. was sacrificed for the rhyme scheme there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Steve, no. uh, your background is unmistakable from Quarantine Classics and from uh, uh, TV's uh, Plunkets and Practical Thumbs. But uh, tell folks, what, what are we looking at? Well, we have uh, some Plunkett royalty behind us. Uh, Jenna uh, bought this for her husband, uh, whose birthday is today. And uh, you might know him as Plunkett 2.5. And I don't often break news here, but according to Jenna, he is still a cutie. Really? Yeah. Really? Because, you might remember uh, that that's what the uh, the ladies here uh, wrote. David oh, really? is such See, a cutie. I, loving Janine kisses. and Linda, yeah. I thought yeah. by now he would be hideous. No, but he's that's, still a cutie, huh? Uh, according to his wife, still okay. a cutie. All right. And does, does he, he still wear Looney Tunes uh, cross collars? Hip -hop. I assume so, because otherwise she would have told me that not. But yeah, no, no. Does, oh, he's does, still he, doing that. does he keep in touch with those two Budweiser women? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't feel it was appropriate for me to ask that question. Janine's a good friend still. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope that Jenna, that you're wearing a Budweiser uh, one piece uh, mm -hmm. for his birthday today. I think that would be great. So 
Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, let's do some flying windows. Well, this one I'm excited about. Honeydew Wilkins, uh, regular contributor to the show. Well, sent you, know in, what, you know what Honeydew brought to us? What was his time. claim to fame? Honeydew brought us uh, the uh, not going to do it. Found not going to do it. You're which right. was like one of the hardest things for us to ever find somehow. Like, George, you couldn't even find not going to do it. Honeydew somehow do it. Found the Saturday Night Live Mother's Day special. <laughs> Yeah. With Dana Carvey's mom flubbing a Honeydew line. Honeydew do it. Well, Honeydew, you do it again because we got some <laughs> great flying windows. And this one has a, has, it's, there's a, a lot of layers here. So let's dive in. There's one, two, oh, cool. three. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like Trade what they did there. Very uniform. Very neat. Very organized. <laughs> oh, squished windows. Yep. Couple more flyings. I like their trajectory. Yeah. Like Stretch windows. What's she reacting to? She's excited what? about being in front of the. Look. Is this <laughs> redness? It says redness. Yes. Disrespect, <laughs> redness, and teasing. And they've the nerve to put a copyright below that. They misspelled one of the important words in yeah. the title. And that's just rud for them to do that. <laughs> um. But they continue on as if nothing oh. as well. Yeah, some traditional right to left, sure. Yeah. Uh, significant drop shadows, I see. PhD. Yeah. PhD did not spell rudeness. <laughs> I mean, they nailed the flying windows. They didn't, didn't have a doctorate in spelling, I'll tell you that. George, you were shocked by that disc, right? There it is. We'll never get them on the show. Rudness. Yeah. So that's uh, th all thanks to Honeydew Wilkins, who did it again. Yeah. Hell of a flying window. Um, Nick, can I tell you a little secret? Sure. Yeah. I, 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 I kind of want to see your, your hot little raviolis. We're back to this. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. <laughs> Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. <laughs> was that one sent in that throw to? No, no, oh, I wow. made it up. I made it up right on the spot. That's, That's even worse. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's even worse that that was from your mind. I know. Uh, I'm not proud of it. Um, well, uh, let's uh, let, let's throw to we'll we'll show you our raviolis in a minute. Hot little ones. But we have yeah. special guest raviolis to show off tonight. Yeah, our buddy Rick. He uh, sent us in. He he did a, a consumption optional. He, he it's on our SLP. He got his parents' complete collection of stuff they taped off TV, and he took all the best commercials and strung it out into like a half hour long. It's 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 so good, and his he has such a good eye for it for uh, you know funny funny stuff. Uh, but yeah, he's a connoisseur and he got obsessed, I think maybe like 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, he got obsessed with Joe Dante's The Movie Orgy. Have you guys heard of this? Did, like George, Steve, have you guys heard of The Movie Orgy? You've heard of Joe no. Dante, he directed yep. Gremlins and, and uh, Gremlins 2 and a bunch of other cool Toy stuff. Toy Soldiers, yeah. Um, but he sent us this, uh, 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 Rick sent us this uh, thumb drive that was three hours long. And it was just kind of, it was just too much. And so we needed a tour guide. So we, we asked Rick to join us and walk us through some of his favorites. So um, here now is Rick telling us all about the movie orgy. It's basically like Joe Dante and John Davison are like you guys. They are, they are you guys from the 60, late 60s and 70s. It's, it's a compilation of commercials, um, old movies, serials, TV shows, all stuff from you know 40s 50s 60s it's and just stuff they found funny yeah and it and and there's clips where oh this clip is a commentary on the clip before it or here's you know there's a dance scene in a movie and all of a sudden they're intercutting other dance scenes from other movies so it looks like all these people are in the same space um just really ahead of its time kind of like the the grandfather of found footage like it kind of stemmed I, mean, I feel like we should know this like this this is like the, our grandfather right i mean like <laughs> i wish joe dante ancestors. was my grandfather that would yes. be incredible 
<laughs> yes. Well, let's yeah, watch so, one. Yeah, let's. So I'm going to start off. So the first, so I, I've seen this movie three times in person. And the last time I saw it was at the University of Wisconsin. I asked Joe Dante, um, hey, of all the clips in the movies, what are your favorites? And he said it's a series of these buffering commercials. So here's <laughs> one of the commercials for buffering. Yes. I like this already. Go ahead, son. Try it. I don't want it, Dad. I bought it for you. <laughs> it's expensive. Oh, look. Wait, wait. What this is this is the buffering commercial, right? This is a commercial <laughs> okay, for buffering. Okay, 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 what all right. kind of kid doesn't want to shoot his dad's gun? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I yep, clicked the right one here. All right. Yeah. Fred, you're such a good shot. He'll just feel inferior. <laughs> Often, what? people who are sensitive to others can be more sensitive to headache pain. Bufferin is for these people. It's strong medicine that treats you gently. Plain aspirin's fine, but bufferin goes to work much faster, yet is gentler to your stomach. Because tough problems are tougher on sensitive people, we believe the strong medicine you need should treat you gently. Faster, gentler bufferin. Strong medicine for sensitive people. What the hell was that? <laughs> now, to me, the lesson of that is the dad is an asshole and needs to get help. Not exactly. that the mom needs to take medicine because she uh, has empathy. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. I, I, what I really like is the little errant shot that he shoots up after she talks yes. to him. He like, turns around and fires. <laughs> wow. He's so pissed that his, de- his son wouldn't shoot with him. It's, and what... what why is, is it because he'd feel inferior? Is that the reason why? Or is he not like his dad? Do we know these answers? I trust the mom on it. <laughs> and I think she's, she's right. a sensitive person. Mm-hmm. She needs a buffer. All right. Are there more? There's there. So that's the only one I shared for now, but there's a whole series of buffer and commercials that take place throughout the, that the is so That's good. kind of like one of the totems of the, uh, of the, of this thing. And when I was making consumption optional, uh, which is available on the found footage SLP club. Nice. Um, the, I was going through my parents' tapes of commercials from the 80s, to stuff they taped off a of TV. On the very last tape, the very last tape, there was a commercial for buffering. I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> it, 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 it's the spiritual connection between- You're, you're the only optional. person who's ever gotten excited about seeing a buffering commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and there's full still circle. Talking- sensitive things in that because it's like oh if you have a sensitive stomach and that one from the 80s so yeah they stuck with that so you sit down to watch um mo- the movie orgy and how did they show it initially like when they made this so they would tour uh so actually I, I, what i have guys is i have schlitz brewing ended up um connecting with them and this is like the packet that they would send out I think to like wholesalers or either campuses and um, they would tour around. I actually have the press release if you want me to read it. That poster is incredible. That's it's like incredible. Very, yeah. What year was that? So this is mid 70s. Okay. Um, it went through a few different names. So this is the escape to movie orgy. It was always the same thing, but it would fluctuate in length. So that like the first cut I saw at the New Beverly was four hours. But it it has been as long as seven hours because they would add stuff, take it away. Like basically what you guys do with volumes, but they were just doing it on the fly. And they would show it all in one continuous. All in one sitting. Wow. So Joe Don, when he introduced it, he's like, yeah, I mean, we would show this to college students and, you know, they'd go up, get a pizza, you know, come back a half hour later. So he was like, ah, you know, if you if you want to stick around and watch the whole thing, go ahead. Well, I like for four hours, I was glued to my seat. <laughs> and like this has been just in his collection, like he, he and John Davison were the only ones that had a copy of it. So like, honestly, this was like the ultimate treasure hunt for me was to like track down a copy of the movie or G. Like when you talk about like, what would you spend money on if you won the lottery? I'd be like, I would produce Joe Dante movies. So he would give me a copy of the movie or G. <laughs> And a, a couple years ago, there was an article that said 
oh, I just watched the movie Orgy on this, uh, you know, torrent site. And uh, it was a five hour cut. And I was like, wait, what? So then I was like, okay, it's, it's out there somewhere. And uh, I tracked it down at the time. And now, now it's on like archive.org. It is easily findable, but like I'd flown out to Los Angeles twice just to see it. Uh, it's something I've been obsessed with for like a decade plus now. You've, you've got to be on a first name basis with Joe Dante at this point, right? I mean, <laughs> I man. hope so. Let, let's watch another one. Yeah. So this next one is a clip from a movie called Speed Crazy. And there's um, this like movie clips from it keep playing throughout. There's a few different movies where they show clips throughout the films, uh, throughout the movie orgy and Speed Crazy is one of them. So here's a little bit from Speed Crazy. And this is a movie? Yeah, this is a, a movie. They're all alike. Always pushing and crowding me. Everybody's always crowding me. Is that the dad from the buffering commercial? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get away with it, Nick. Don't crowd me, Joe. Try to single that car. No, no. Please, Nick, don't kill me. <laughs> I like that actor a lot. I do too. <laughs> Is he still around, you know? <laughs> Jesus. I told you not to crowd me, Joe. <laughs> Everybody crowds me. <laughs> So you did or didn't want to be crowded then? <laughs> and that is from the, the the clips that they pulled of Speed uh, Crazy. All of them have to do with that main character of Nick complaining about people crowding him. So <laughs> is, he on, is he on speed? Is it that kind of speed crazy? <laughs> no, it's, it's the 1950s speed, the hot rod. That, that oh, thing. that kind of speed. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. I, I like that though anybody who's like an archivist or somebody who traffics in that like you know there, there's um other people who kind of do what we do like tv carnage and 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 P i'm thinking more of people who make like long compilations you know and pinky from tv carnage i know has done like an entire one of exercise videos in the spirit of the movie orgy and it's interesting about it's almost like DJing where you're like, but what are they doing? They're just spinning records. But they, but like with splicing movies together, or I guess with VHS footage, the way you put it together and the stuff you pick out from it is a very personal thing. So I yeah. like that. I like a clip like that, you, that they're like something about that particular scene from that movie made them think it was funny and they put it in the, the compilation. Yeah. And just seeing it with that audience multiple times, with the the crowd me lines every time that comes up and it just keeps heightening like this guy does not shut up about people crowding him like it just gets funnier and funnier like you start going nuts you, you're like sitting on the edge of your seat when is he going to say something about crowding or being crowded yeah um, so but the, how was it presented did he did he stand up beforehand and and just did he introduce anything like did he say oh there's some buffering commercials or does he just let it play and he just has let it play okay just, you know, nice yeah yes um and uh what was i gonna say oh that thing with um that that oh image that you guys saw from the press release i ended up getting a full-size poster of it and uh joe dante signed it don't crowd me joe just like <laughs> <laughs> nice uh all right this last one i've watched this one this one's so good this one okay. is incredible, but introduce so, it. For over the decade plus I've known you guys, I've been like, you guys should see the movie orgy. It's like, it's right up your alley. You I guys know. should see the movie orgy. It was, it's over three hours, Rick. We don't have that kind of attention span. I mean, we'll watch a two hour cash register instructional video, <laughs> but when it's something good yes, and it's that long, forget about it. And this clip is like, it's basically if, if Joe and Nick were back in the 60s, this would be the clip you guys would have flipped out that you found and the, the, the 60s version of the Found Footage Festival would have this clip from a TV series from the 50s called Andy's Gang. You, you know us all too well, Rick. <laughs> um, 
Get to your little pipe organ midnight. <laughs> Off to a strong start. <laughs> you better get set too, Squeaky. Kids, today midnight and Squeaky get are going to play a tune we all know. Go ahead, Midnight. <laughs> loves me, this I know. For Are they alive? The Bible the cat tells is. me so. <laughs> Little ones to him belong. They are weak and he is strong. And he doesn't have the great. Yes, <laughs> they bored. They're bored. Poor mouse. Is it alive? It does look alive, the way its cheeks are gushing. Is it just sedated? I don't know. <laughs> Poor midnight. <laughs> Before the invention of the ASPCA. <laughs> Midnight's hitting a couple of foul notes there. <laughs> This is the BB Bunny of the 60s right here. Yeah. Please kill me! <laughs> yes, Jesus <laughs> love me. Yes, Let's watch an insane Jesus drunk man. Me. He's gotta be drunk. Do his little cat yes, and mouse show. Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. One more time! <laughs> Go to the audience and no one's there anymore. I love it! <laughs> we all like that song. <laughs> we all like right, you'll that You'll hate song. this next one. <laughs> you know, I say this a lot with uh, like religious clips like that, but I just always imagine Jesus looking down and being like, why? You don't... Don't just don't do that. Or maybe <laughs> Jesus is like, "Whoa, that was awesome! Thank you so much." I don't know. What, what kind of God do we have? <laughs> I don't know if it's one who enjoys sedated animals playing instruments, but <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I hope, I hope that's our God. Yeah. Just that the thud of that drum. Thump, thump, <laughs> thump. <laughs> what was the what was the mouse's name again? It was Midnight and Squeaky, I think. Squeaky, Squeaky, Squeaky yeah. yeah. Squeaky actually well, had a pretty decent rhythm. The thing is, too, like we have our way of presenting clips because we think the context adds humor to it, and and you know us setting it up adds adds humor. And, but uh, there's something to be said too for like a long form thing, which we're not getting with these little tastes of it. But like the juxtaposition of that clip next to another one, or like what you were saying with yeah, you know, it, it, and so there is something interesting about watching the full version. So, yeah, but maybe we give people small tastes of this from from you know. It's it's nice to have a tour guide on it for mm -hmm. for a show like ours. But like, if it comes, does he still tour it? You said no. They, I mean, there had been screenings. I know that there was one in Chicago, and there's been stuff at. Um, I think it was even at like the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Just every so um, often, it'll just pop up. So often it'll pop up, okay. but it, like we are in this incredible era where it is easily accessible now. Um, it's like, I, I truly cannot believe that I have, like, I have it in my hands. Like I can watch it <laughs> with the second time I thought, like, I was obsessed with this. The first time I saw it, the second time I saw it, I brought my audio recorder with, so I could record the audio and listen to it later. <laughs> I used to do I that. I didn't know if I had a chance to see it again. So that's awesome. Wow. So you said like archive.org, if people wanted to watch the full thing, they could probably find yeah, it. Yeah. Last I saw it was up there. Otherwise it's, it's making its way around. You, 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 you can find it. If you go on Letterboxd too, just look at the movie orgy and look at the list that it's in. It usually will show a site that it's on, but um, I'd be more than happy to, to share additional clips, additional buffering commercials. Whatever. Oh yeah. I want to see more of those, man. Well, thank you, Rick, for the history lesson. That Absolutely. was great. I'm so glad. I'm just so glad to get to share this with the world. Like it is something that is very special to me. And uh, it's like I said, it's the prototype for the found footage festival. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Well, like we mentioned, we'll have Rick back 
uh, to show us more scenes from that. And I'm excited to dive in because it's all films that, you know, it's it's the, the pre VHS version of what we do. So, yeah, I, I wanted to uh, I want to organize like a movie orgy screening this summer or something. It sounds like he does it every so often. I think it'd be like Found Footage Festival and Joe Dante together at last. Like Maybe we, we could do a virtual part. screening of it, you know, like, um, yeah, that would be fun, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we should try to get Joe Dante on VCR party. Because like we, we both dabble and I mean he got his start showing these things at college shows and and uh, yeah and so, so did we so before yeah, we're brothers practically before you have to eat any Batman cereal I just want to clarify that it, he directed Gremlins two the new batch but not the first one so I know it's probably in the comments already the message boards are lighting up I'm just trying to save some Batman cereal here but okay. by the way our SLP right. our SLP club um, Joe mentioned it up top but it's it's like our streaming service it's like netflix for like super hyper specific stuff that we like so jeff krulik who did heavy metal parking lot some of his films are on there um rick's uh consumption optional of all the commercials he taped locally from the 80s is on there and then all of our dvds and stuff so it's an option if you want to stream our stuff it's on that slp club on on our website nick i'm looking at gremlins on wikipedia right now yeah directed directed by joe dante really Oh I'm only God. seeing I'm only seeing the new batch. Do you have any? What <laughs> internet are you using? Uh, I let's see. I'm on uh, Internet Mozilla. Explorer. Who did you think directed Gremlin? Gremlin's the first one. I didn't know who directed it. Oh, I I just looked this up. This is embarrassing for you. Yeah. He was trying to save you. Though. I was trying to save you. I was trying to <laughs> throw throw myself on the grenade, but I threw myself on the wrong grenade. I think. <laughs> And now he's throwing no more grenade. grenades at you. There was no grenade on by me. You yeah, threw I know. yourself on some grenade that wasn't for me. I got an I, I got an itchy reaction to potential grenades here, but I, I was I was trying to look out. Um, All right. I remember you, Rick Rick mentioned Gremlins too in that interview we just played too. He did. Well, that was probably his favorite one because that's a really weird movie. Yeah. No, I do uh, like I do prefer Gremlins two to the first one. So, uh, well, no Batman serial all around then, right? <laughs> What do you what do you mean? Like around you? It just just for anybody. There's none none needed. No, you got you made a huge mistake, an embarrassing mistake. You have to you can do some nads in your nose or something. All right. Nad, nads in the nose it is. For what real? The, what ravioli? Yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> just whatever will appease you because you'll forget about it next week. That's true. What uh, uh, what do you have for ravioli? Okay, so I did. A, I put together another two-word phrase challenge. We were doing a college show a couple weeks ago, which you know normally we do like co like virtual college shows where we uh, you know it's like a rural college in Pennsylvania or something. Um, but we got Stanford. We did Stanford a couple weeks ago. That's like that's a good one. They that's wouldn't fly college. us to the West Coast, but having a zoom in, absolutely. So we absolutely. did absolutely, yeah. So. Um, so what I do with these, if you haven't seen them, I give Nick two words that he has to say. He has to work into our live show. And we have maybe 30 students there uh, over Zoom. And um, this is all real. So uh, I give Nick two words and he has to work it in. So here's uh, the Stanford two-word phrase challenge. And there's lots of firsts here. Nick actually gets one wrong. He gets mm. a lot of stuff wrong. But he, gets, he got one wrong in this one. And – but – at the end, you get a, your very first triple banger of all time. And hello, Stanford. Hey, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to VCR Party. I'm I just laugh it out. <laughs> okay, I had a visit to the tickle doctor. You gotta find oh, that and they will, they will not call the police on you. No matter how tight your leopard skin outfit is, they no. will not call them. Even when they should, it's awfully revealing. Could see a lot of your J pouch, but no, no, uh, no police called. They just let you dance for two yeah, hours. They did. They did. It, it was, right. This was either blended up and poured over corn or made into a smoothie. And most people tried it. I had another concoction called pork jazz. No one wanted to go near that. But the turbo gravy, people tried it. So here's some highlights from yeah, Kenny. It's Kenny and Key. Yes. And I, I stayed and cleaned up. There's a lot of gravy spilled, but I, I mopped up after my slimy mistake. I'm, I'm not a monster. So You're just you're such a gentleman. We did. We show. came out on top. And if you happen to see two competitive cereal eaters who call themselves the Crispix champion uh, on local news later this year. It could be us. It could That's be us. Awesome. It's public access montage. Uh, 
so wonderful many, weirdos. So many wonderful weirdos. The, the senior citizen dancing, I realized that was a Valentine's Day episode. And what we didn't show you is if you let it go, one of the grandmas actually plopped uh, on the ground and uh, and she didn't get hurt, but uh, there's more to that footage. Maybe we should resurrect that for Valentine's Day. Okay. I don't there's know. Yeah, a, okay. All right. You remember that? They're wearing the heart. There's a heart transition in there and they're wearing red ties. It was, it was oh, okay. Nice okay. Valentine's I think, Day I, think I know what you're sure. Okay. But okay. Uh, our favorite show We're in there. trying to one. watch all 11,000 of our VHS tapes, and there's some truly awful stuff here. Tune so, in uh, to see uh, our co-host, Carl Strauss. You can see George's mustache, Steve's thumb, and, and about 11,000 videos. It's every yeah, Tuesday night. Exactly. On there's, a lot, there's a lot yeah. going on. That's all. That's it. Good night, everybody. See you guys. So I'm sure we have a lot of uh, Stanford students watching for the first time tonight this yeah is probably, welcome they all probably tuned in once well, they, they heard wanted that we to had... see, see my co-host carl strauss there <laughs> they'd heard good things <laughs> and again we're getting paid decent money by these schools to come do a show for them and we're entertaining ourselves during it so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have to yeah what do you got for your uh, hot little ravioli well i had a couple things lined up but we're, we're kind of with uh rick's segment we're running a little long so i just put together I, I thought, you know, we're, we're gearing up for what we call the toe tapping tournament um, for 2021 um, with commercial jingles. And I got a great one in uh, in my inbox from uh, Reese. And this one will be in your head. So this is uh, our viewer Reese from Australia sent this one in. Oh, but it's an American clip. Person to person. Communication. Person to person. Emotion and the information. What? That was, there's a lot of strange shots in there. I mean, you can go back uh, and check the tape, but like the very elderly grandma opening up the, the card, the construction worker and the newscaster. Um, yeah, I mean. People are getting excited about this toe tapping tournament. Like you could feel the buzz, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just right around the corner. What are we saying? Two weeks from now? Yeah, I think March 19th. So around the time that the NCAA tournament is happening, we will be having our toe tapping tournament. Oh, people are just getting excited. Hey, Steve, you just um, put something in the chat I saw, and you wondered why well, Nick got X'd for. Yeah, you know, I was. You know, I was wondering, do we cover that? Why uh, Nick did not get credit for? Uh, was it Grandma's Grandma plops? Grandma plopped. It was Grandma had plopped, or he, he put a word in between Grandma and plopped. So it wasn't pure. That's the rule. You have to say wait, the two wait, words. Did you accept Otherwise, this, Nick? Could... I said one of the grandmas plopped, so I put a plural. And um, yeah. that, well, I guess, didn't let, me, let, let me play it back because I there was definitely a word in between. Before you do that, um, <laughs> let me finish my segment if you wouldn't oh, mind. Okay. You um, so, Reese, uh, as we often do when he sends us a good jingle or when we find a good jingle, we ask him to sing it along. He goes, I'm just going to say, eliminate the middleman here and just sing that jingle for you now. So, we don't even have to oh. ask him to sing it. Oh, good, good. Here's Reese. That's going to be my next question yeah. the person to person jingle. Person to person communication. Person to person, emotion into information. You're face to face, and that's fantastic. TVOI witness news shows you the good and not just the tragic. Eye to eye, from Earth to you. Person to person, TVOI witness news. Oh, he's so powerful. Every Felt single it time. out. Yeah, he Bravo. does belt it out. Yeah, and you can tell he's singing from the diaphragm. Absolutely, yeah. It's not reedy. It's very, um, yeah, he's got a lot of uh, oomph behind those those pipes. All right, here's here's Grandma Plop. Let's just let's just listen to what actually went down here. Uh, so wonderful many, weirdos. So many wonderful weirdos. The, the senior citizen dancing, I realized that was a Valentine's Day episode. And what we didn't show you Long is if you let it go, one this. of the grandmas. Huh? Long wind up to this, by yeah. the way. Actually, Plop. Hold on. All right. What we didn't show you is if you let it go, one of the grandmas actually plopped. One of the grandmas actually plopped. Right. Yeah. So you if you no let cigar. it go. Yeah. One of the grandmas actually plopped. Well, I'll try to do better ah. next time around. And I'll just try to do better. 
Let me. That's uh, all we uh, ask. That's all we ask. Let me just. Uh, I want to just scrub through without showing, but just I want to <laughs> scrub through some of the images here. So. Okay. Uh, this is in person. To person, you're just watching this mulleted man and his wife watching, I guess, while eating. Standing and watching. Standing and watching and eating. Are they at a party? I thought they were at a party. A TV no, party? They're, oh, they're, they're just standing. in their kitchen, standing and watching person to person. Did maintenance by any means do the lighting for that? Like, look at that <laughs> yeah, harsh. <laughs> Those are Joma Williams. Then you got this grandma just mm -hmm. looking at the, and then this. Oh, this must be the weather. He's putting on his glasses to look at the weather. Mm. Then. Did he shake his he... head like, "Oh no, this is bad." <laughs> It was. It was yeah. a cyclone. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, we're oh. fucked. We're fucked. <laughs> Man, this people just looking at each other in the aisle. It's like it's an Armenian wedding or something. It's just. <laughs> then you got, like, what are they doing? They're looking person to person, I guess. So there are people looking at each other. And then look at. <laughs> There's that. Happy hundredth birthday. We get to see that. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. We should track her down. Um, just to uh, get her on the show, see what's what was it like being the person to person? <laughs> and then look at they're they're kind of like person to you, person to person, TV I with you. All right, that, I just felt person. I just felt like it needed more analysis. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, um, here's I, something else in the five day bell detox. There's here's another page here. Oh, looks great. Digest. Yeah, um, yeah, that was that was powerful. That was uh, wonderful. Well, should we get to uh, some cyber videos? Let's do it. This is the segment of the show where we show you how to watch videos on the internet. And uh, Steve, what do you have for us? Well, we've been talking about um, sports in the, my last couple ones. We, I went to on uh, the uh, Saturday morning cartoons. We did uh, Michael Jordan and Bo Jackson and Wayne Gretzky. Pro stars. Pro stars. Of yes. And uh, that got uh, me thinking about all the other times. Um, athletes have been maybe, I don't want to say misused because that's the wrong thing. But, uh, you know, w when their acting has not necessarily shined as bright as their star. And so uh, I think that happens a lot in local commercials. So I've been thinking about maybe doing an exploration. So if you have any, uh, any of the Melinda's out there have any videos from their local commercials where just an athlete is doing not a great job uh, acting, please send them in. Um, this week, uh, my friend Paul actually sent me one in. I asked him, and uh, this is uh, a Washington area car dealership and it features Ray Lewis, LeVar Arrington and Clinton Portis. Chevy Beamers and minivans, over 600 cars, trucks, SUVs. Are you listening, man? Let Eastern Motors put you in a car today. Let Eastern Motors finance it all the way. Powerful. It reminded that me a little bit of Credit Clown. Credit, credit Clown. Oh, it is kind of credit clownish. Yeah, yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah, repetitive. I mean, but it is in my head. I'll say that. So oh, that's um, a good one. I'm looking forward to this uh, new segment within the segment, Steve. Yeah. Because I am too. Yeah. Because, like, oh, I just, I've always loved athletes and their stilted deliveries. And, uh, and plus, like, for regional commercials, it doesn't even have to be that good of an athlete. Like, I remember, like, in like 2002 Minnesota, like Jock Jones had a commercial where he was on, it was like Jock Jones. Like he was like, you know, maybe a 271 hitter or something. But yeah. He had his own commercial. The yeah. Packers kicker, Chris Jackie in like the late eighties <laughs> yes. had, had his own commercial, you know, like it didn't they're affordable matter. and they're somewhat recognizable. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. This, this series could go on a long time. Good luck, Steve. We'll see. Yeah. Thank you. Let me uh, show off one that uh, actually I, I saw on Mike Drucker, who's a previous guest of, um, well, he's been on a lot of shows, but especially the Plunkets. He's, he's uh, the king of the Plunkets. Um, he's uh, I believe the head writer on Samantha B right now. And uh, he posted this thing where he's like, you know, the first uh, part of this clip, I didn't know what was funny about it. And then it, it got great at the end. So it's a, uh, basically it plays on the fact that in the, in the UK, there's not just two parties, like every political party that wants to be one can get on the ticket. So um, they're announcing some of the more obscure 
political parties. In talking point of the day, among candidates in the Chesterfield by-election, nominations closed this afternoon, leaving a record 17 candidates to fight the seat on March the 1st. And the other candidates are Lord Such, Monster Raving Looney Party, Last Stand, Sid Shaw, Elvis Lee Yours, Elvis Presley Party, David Bentley, Four Wheel Drive, Hatchback Road Safety, Helen Anscombe, Death Off Roads, Jitendra Bhadwaj, Yoga and Meditation, Donald Butler, Buy Your Chesterfield in Tame Party, David Carhill, Reclassify Sun Newspaper as a Comic, John Connell, Peace Candidate, John Davey, No Increase in Dental Charges, Christopher Hill, Prisoner Party, Thomas Layton, Spare the Earth, Paul Nicholas Jones, Independent, and Giancarlo Picaro, official Acne Party candidate. I mean, the official, I'm voting the Acne ticket straight on, uh, down the line next election. Do you think the Acne one, was that a joke or was that like an opportunity for them to like promote? I think a lot of it was to promote and to yeah. say like they, one person wanted to grind their ax against the, the Sun newspaper, you know, so it was a lot of that, I think. Uh, yeah. Just to have a news reader say what their party's name in a serious way in a serious way yeah. yeah so, so i don't know i feel like politics was better in the uk because of that and that alone yeah george what do you got oh well sometimes there will be a cyber video i consider showing but then i think that's a joe type video i'd never show it but then it hit me that's how i can present it so i'd like to introduce you to my new corner let's move it quickly george's Joe, order. I, I like the. That. I like how brief it was. I like the sound of this. Okay, okay so guys. Okay. This is a video that made the rounds 15 years ago. It has the a totally internet ready name. Um, I've watched it in shock dozens and dozens of times over the years. I'm still in disbelief about it, but I, I'm and I'm sorry in advance, but just blame Joe for this, even though he has nothing to do. Sorry, with this. I've never seen this video once, but sorry. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it actually made my kick my into my gag reflexes on that. Is that yeah. real or is that a is that like a made up thing? No, I think that's real. I I um yeah. I I I've never looked at a microphone the same way since. Ooh. Um potential choking hazard. And the guy was fine or what happened, do you know? Uh I'm pretty sure he started it, from 2007 to 2008. He had a web page that was sort of making fun of himself. Um Siegfried, microphone. Yes, yeah, Siggy, uh, because he got international fame out of that. Um, I already regret <laughs> the, showing it. He made the T-shirts and everything, and the plus his heart. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I actually a gag reflex actually kicked in. Like I almost had to, I almost had to be a Steve and look away. Like I almost had to. Steve, did I it get, do anything for you? Uh, I didn't enjoy it. I, I did immediately looked away as soon as it started to happen. I guess I like you, you have the cord, so you can kind of pull that to get it out. So there's some retrieval mechanism there but uh there are a lot of ooh. theories about what happened to, to him online there was a snopes i was all over archive.org trying to find him make sure he's okay um i'm gonna say he's okay because otherwise i should not have shown that so Let's he's doing great it. now yeah yeah that's what i always just tell people <laughs> yeah see this well, is joe's corner you said he was <laughs> he said he was like capitalizing on it after the fact right unless it was somebody making Posing fun of him it. yeah but oh. it was it was a site out of Germany. Okay. Uh -huh. Interesting. Well, I hope he's all right. Joe, yep. what do you have for We IMGs? got some IMGs. <laughs> Locks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. Okay, so here's what an IMG is. An IMG is a YouTube video that's barely seen the light of day. The uploaders never even bothered to change the name. And I have a fleet of IMG harvesters who are toiling out there in the mines. And this week, I'm going to present three of my favorites. Uh, all right. First up, we got 
IMG 2920, nine views. Chris G sent this in. Uh, and I was going to save this for Father's Day, but I was too excited about it. He, he called it Happy Father's Day. <laughs> nine views. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. <laughs> That tool playing in the background? <laughs> yeah, system of a down, maybe. Oh, so I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get flagged for it and find yeah. out then. <laughs> totally. Happy Father's uh, Day, everybody. Nice find, Chris. <laughs> uh, IMG 3184. Flash Gordon sent this one. 16 views. Uh, title it Person Using Sun Filter and Singing a Lullaby. Why did it have to end? And why do they always say, why uh, don't look back? Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Thank I you, Flash, it. for that I one. I liked it. Uh, IMG 2763. Now, Nick, like with found footage with the show, we really don't dabble in pornography, right? Like it's no. just not really. As much but as we'd like to, we don't. As much as we'd love to. But th this particular IMG, I'm making an exception. It's not truly pornography, uh -huh. <clears throat> but you might have to do some pixeling. I know, I know this is your episode to edit. So yeah. uh, get, get your. I'm uh... sensing a pattern here. <laughs> You're burning the midnight oil again. Get your pixel filter ready. Uh, 14 views. Slumsbury sent this in. Title is Guy draws a whole bunch of sexual scenes on his palm and then animates them by moving his hand around. Very hard to explain this in just one sentence. Great score, though. All right, here it is. It's actually very talented. Good, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. This is what you did before pornography. Right. Credits. Uh, credits for this IMG. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, deleted scenes. Yeah. Yeah. The blur. So what do you think? You got to blur that out or yes. you got to you, you so? <laughs> a lot of blurring on that one. You don't yep. think YouTube will be fine with that? Cuz he it's, uploaded it. Yeah, but it's people who watch this show. It's whether they report it and do I don't know. Think, do you think you could successfully like with that if you if you looked at that guy's hand could you successfully <laughs> <laughs> Nick, answer the question. Uh, let me throw it to George first because he's so amused by this. <laughs> no, it's just, I don't know. It just looked like that guy had a lot of, had been working out with his hand a lot. Uh -huh. Anyway, like he, he looked like he knew Double the joint. He had a lot of time on his hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. um, uh, no. no, you could. You don't think you no. could? No. No. Nope. Desert Island? Like if you're on a desert island for like five years and then the guy I mean, showed up with his hand? If left with some colored markers on a desert island, <laughs> I'm, uh, who's to say I wouldn't do the same? Yeah, that's true. Um, all uh, right. Hey, the, I, I want to do one minute with Songer. It's the, it's the uh, Daniel Songer. It's uh, the YouTube uh, comedian that Tim Herod uh, introduced us to. And Nick, did you say this was wildly popular? Or it's universally it hated. I haven't seen one positive comment about this. All yet. right, let's get this party started. One minute with Songer. One minute with Songer really feels much longer. If you think it's funny, he couldn't be more wronger. Okay, so Tim Harrod, uh, a writer for The Onion and writer for uh, Conan O'Brien, he uh, curated he curates these for me, and uh, he sent this one in. Comedy Act 181, The Cure for Gay Phobia. And Tim said this. He goes, this offers another guessing game, but this time I don't know the answer. He, des he describes the cure twice, and it still makes no sense. It would be easy to have an hour-long panel discussion on how the course of actions he prescribed will cure or affect anyone's gay phobia. 
So, so if you're homophobic, this is his prescription to, for the cure for being homophobic. Yeah, but for some reason he calls it gay phobia. Okay. Okay. But so he yeah, means I, well. If there was a cure for homophobia, I think that would be great. The world would be a better place. Yeah. So well, this is his solution. So we'll okay. we'll discuss afterwards. And Nick, also, I'm wondering if you have a a songer impression mm. just in your back pocket. Maybe okay. uh, you can work on something. All right. Here's uh, one minute of songer. Really feels much longer. Ladies and gentlemen, comedian, entertainer, Daniel Songer, back here on Tranquility Hall for Comedy Act 181. But you know what? You would not believe I all wait, I keep waiting of for the a shirt on- tug. I keep waiting for a shirt oh, yeah. tug. You know, the fat guy's shirt tug to get it away from your stomach. Yeah, yeah. He, he, does, I, I he, did, he-, a, he did a pants hike. <clears throat> So okay. I thought we were on our way to a shirt tug. But, I bet okay. he's definitely a shirt tugger. All right, here Sorry we go. Sorry to make this longer than a minute. All right. I cannot believe all... Wait, wait. So the opening line is very important. 81. But you know what? You would not believe all of the men on this world. I mean... All... You would not believe all the men on this world. Mm-hmm. Almost every man in the whole world has a, 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 what we call gay phobia. I mean, you know, it's just every man practically has gay phobia. And I developed, yes, I did. I developed the cure for gay phobia. And what you want to do is you want to go out and buy a recliner and then install the recliner backwards. That way, every time you hit the lever, gay phobia, gay phobia, gay phobia. I don't get it. Keep hitting the lever, man. Gay phobia, gay phobia. You know, you come on, you pull it. Gay polity, man. Gay phobia. Gay polity? Yeah, it's a cure. Huh? I don't know what he said there. Gay polity, man? Man, gay phobia. Gay polity, man. Gay phobia. Yeah, it's a cure. You know, it's like install the recliner backwards, pull the lever. Yeah, we got it. Gay phobia. <laughs> Gay phobia. I'm not kidding you, man. Hey. Well, he's not kidding us. He was serious about that. Yeah, he was. Yeah, there's another, uh, and I'm sure that one will be wildly popular with everybody. Yikes. Uh, It always feels like, I mean, in that case, it was longer, but it it felt like a good portion of the show was spent on that particular segment. I'm thinking about doing two minutes with Songer. No. No, you don't think? Better not? Better not? Nope. No, no, better not. We have to uh, briefly do a that at a done segment. Uh, this is the, the segment of the show where we try to honor viewer requests. That's it. That it done. Right there. Dave wrote in and said his wife, Jen, is celebrating her birthday March 7th. Coming up, one of her favorite videos, series of videos is Deke Rudig. Of course, D of the Magical Rainbow Sponge. She even will look her up on YouTube and watch some sponging to relax as she falls asleep on stressful nights, which I think that could work. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. We, we've like shown so much of Dee and the Magical Rainbow Sponge. She was a big hit of our volume six show and tour um, and DVD. And then uh, we, we found even more. We found the Magical Metallic Rainbow Sponge. We found much more Magical Rainbow Sponge. She's, she's done a million of them. And uh, I kind of went back to the drawing board for, for Joe, when you were first cutting that first montage, you had all these selects and there was a bunch that didn't make the cut. So I, yeah. I feel like most of these haven't been shown before. This is the cutting room floor of D and the magical rainbow sponge for, for Jen's birthday. A whole video devoted to the rainbow sponge. Gloves are incredible. Breathing heavy. I plan to show you a bazillion ideas in 30 minutes. Let's show you. Calendar. Here we go. Now, I have a pure, oh, I love a sponge that is absolutely pure. Now, I just don't do backgrounds. Duh. Do you see that? I have to speak softly when I say pastel. I mean, you'll have no trust on me because I like everything. Are they fun or what? I call that California seismographic look. All right. Now, now, let's go back to bright. Look at this. Look at that. Gee, is that fun. Look at that. I love this. I get my gloves 
or, oh, I mean, a wonderful rich background. Oh, okay, do an edge on a card. The thing of it is with this one. <laughs> I like that she goes into that a, voice. Oh, I can't stand She it. can't even say it. Oh, earth tone. Once you get started, it is so hard to stop. The cutting room floor. I think some of those could have made the cut. They were pretty good. That's like her heroine, isn't it? D's it's like heroin for Jen's. her. Yeah. No, well, maybe both. Yeah. yeah. D is oh, no, Jen's, Jen's heroine. asleep. Jen's asleep right now. We put her to bed. Oh, All yeah. right. You'll have yeah. to watch the rest of the show. Conked out. Anything uh, else this week? We got another that had to done. Happy birthday to Raven from Heather. And uh, we shot a rent to Joe and Nick with uh, four Raven from Heather this week. And uh, this is a little little plug for uh for that uh so nick and i if you have a birthday we will uh do a very specific vcr party show just for you uh for money it costs money uh it's on our website rent to joe and nick and one thing nick that i think we, we've done it in a couple of them we've never done it on vcr party is that i'll ask you lots of questions about your history with french kissing and yeah, I've no been... one asked for this, by the way, but uh, you just feel loose, I guess. Well, one person did ask for it, I think, but not specifically French kissing. It just yeah. kind of happened organically. But I, I think that's a selling point for these Rent to Joe and Nick's that you mm -hmm. will learn. We, we're not going to talk about Nick's Frenching history on VCR. Parties. No, no, no. We're not going to. In order for you to hear about Nick's Frenching history, like the average length of time, the last time he Frenched, the first time he Frenched, his technique, like what does he do with his tongue, you'll get those answered in a Rent to Joe and Nick on yeah. our Putting website. those behind the paywall. Those are <laughs> – that's some top secret information that you're and only going to get. For people that have already got a Rent to Joe and Nick, don't tell anybody Nick's any of Nick's Frenching secrets. Yep. So um, stay behind the paywall. Yes, exactly. Well, we should we should have them like sign like an NDA or something. <laughs> we you should. Know? Yeah, we should actually have people sign NDAs for the rent to Joe and Nick. Yeah, those yeah. are secrets that can't leave that particular private video that we make for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. They're all about like 10 minutes long. And yeah, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. How, don't you want to wish your special somebody a happy St. Patrick's Day <laughs> with, a, with a personalized video from us? Yeah, it's yeah. Well, happy um, birthday to both uh, Jen and to Raven uh, from all of us here at VCR Party. Um, real quick, real quick. I want to play a, a jingle just to get everybody more hyped up for this uh, toe-tapping tournament. I have all these plans for it. I have two, two different brackets. We're going to do jingles, then we're going to do like VHS music videos on one side, and then we're all going to take four. We're going to have on judges. Um, we're going to have the sweet 16, the final four. It's going to be a big to do. It's going to be a big thing. And that's coming up March 19th. So to determine but, the number one jingle of this year, basically the number one toe tapper. Yeah. Yeah. It might not be a jingle. It might be like a oh, just any song from a video, any song from a video. So people do like email us uh, info at found footage fest.com. If there's a, something that we need to see and each one of us, uh, the four of us, we're each going to take four songs and then we'll set them up in brackets. Um, and I'll explain it later in more detail. But for now, Evan sent in this, Dan the Piano Man from Spokane, Washington. Um, he said this jingle ticks all the boxes, upbeat, key change, and it's very corny. And uh, Evan actually worked for this guy. Mm. And you actually see a toe tapping in this commercial. Uh, how could this not win? Dan the Piano Man, when it comes to pianos, Dan's a man. What do you think? Does that have a chance to win it? It absolutely does. Yeah. yeah. You just never know what the judges. You never yeah. know what the judge is going to want. I mean, person to person is also a strong contender. So who's to say? Um, yeah. But, yeah. But that's exciting. That's coming up. That's our big tournament. And uh, oh, by the way, stay till the end of the, tonight's show, because what we're going to play on the way out is something that I've been excited about all day. So it's, it's kind of a, a late thing, but you'll you'll appreciate it. Do this I know what it is? Or no? Yeah, yeah, you do. Okay. But you haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, for Saturday morning cartoons, um, George, you're kind of 
taking the helm for this one. What do we have? It's going to be an episode of a cartoon that really has stood withstood the test of time. That would be Galaxy High. It took a, a lot of viewings to find one that is worth um, watching on Shatter Day. It's a shatty episode of an otherwise Ooh. great series. Good. Now, I'm not familiar. With, Joe, did you know this one at all? I've never even heard of this one before. Steve? Galaxy High? What year was it? Was it 90s? 86. Okay. And, so and I'll give you... Been... Yeah, it was developed by Chris Columbus. Who, oh. Who, who, who uh... directed Gremlins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think he, right. he wrote it. Of course, yeah. He directed one Gremlins. and two. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, good. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see that because I've never seen That'll that episode. Um, and then Willie's Garage, there is a bombshell tomorrow night involving Wayne Schlegel that you'll remember where you were when you watch the opening minutes of Willie's Garage tomorrow night. You'll is there a Wayne Schlegel beach towel? No, no, you no, found? no merchandise. This is oh. a, this is a piece of Hollywood history that you're going to be witnessing. So look forward to that. Here, here's um, another, uh, here's another scene from the five day bowel detox book. There's a guy eating a oh. bagel sandwich. And that's probably going to clog him up, right? Oh and yeah. Then that's not going to be good on his bowels. I'll need some of that. Magical... Oh, look at the five footer. <laughs> The five footers in here. It, it writes a column every month. <laughs> <laughs> Findings from the five footer. <laughs> all right. That's all that's it. Where are we going out on, Nick? Um, yeah. Okay. So here's what we're going out on. Uh, last week we played, um, I, I played uh, for, I can't remember who it was for. Oh God. Now I'm going to get in trouble, but it was a McGruff video. Um, I think it was Scrappy it, Rat, wasn't oh, it? Oh, Scrappy Rat. Yeah, of course, Veronica. Yeah. Yes. So I think I'm here. Thank yeah, God I know. I'm here. So to this is for all your mistakes. Uh, this is a little bit of uh, this cassette tape that was actually released uh, from McGruff. Using crack and cocaine to get high. That's what you say you know. But it's really insane. You could die. What are you thinking of? Okay, so that's a little bit of that. Great song catchy all about not doing crack and cocaine and that same episode george for math corner our, our math related segment played uh, kind of a mashup of a high school quiz show and this this one i just thought could make a great punk rock song boyer town eric anarchy okay that's it so <laughs> it's like how is that not you know used in a sex pistol song so uh uh bob from hull who's a musician from the uk and has sent us in amazing video uh i guess songs in the past oh yeah he's good the dead past is his band name look at look right. up the dead past p-a-s-t and uh he said hey why not combine the mcgruff song with the anarchy sample and uh he did and i, I made a video for it so i'm gonna play that on the way out it's uh, using all mcgruff footage uh so without further i guess before we do that i'll just say we'll be right back right after that and if we had been prepared we could have done better Happy birthday, Dave. My nose isn't full of yuck anymore. How about you wash, I'll dry, and be the DJ? And Joe, I just wanted to say I love you. <laughs> I love you too. He's a crack and cocaine to get high. That's what you say you love. But it's really insane. You could die. What are you thinking of? Nobody's needing that crack and cocaine A terrible trouble behind it Sooner or later you burn your brain Making a mess of your mind Just a smell of smoke In your career that's all you care about But your life is a joke And you need someone to help you out Cause nobody's needed like crack or cocaine There's terrible trouble behind it Sooner or later you're burning your brain Making a mess of your mind When we return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing Alright, I gotta go That's all, that's it Let me see that one Rocks are done Gotta sleep Bye. That's it. That had been done. Over. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? My nose is for yucky.
anymore. And that's all I'm doing. Triodal. Tinkerbell. Ooh. An A. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Nice, nice. Goodbye.